go ahead and hit that subscribe button, rate, review us on our process to perform channel on YouTube. You can hit me up, Mike Wall68 at Twitter and process to perform on Instagram. Of course, you can check out the On My Block podcast with myself and Packers all time leading rusher, Amon Green. You can check that out anywhere you get your podcast or again on our process to perform channel. So today we're going to go into a little bit of block party stuff. Bengals offensive line over the last couple of years has been retooled. Um, some people might say that they have been the limiting factor to how great Joe Burrow and that that uh, Cincinnati Bengals offense can be. When I look at them, they've given up some I mean, huge numbers. And, and to, for me, Joe Burrow is probably top two or three quarterback in the National Football League. I think he's a, I think he's a magician the way he's gotten out of some of the stuff, some of the plays that he makes. He's just a different kind of animal as far as what he reads pre-snap and the adjustments he can make on the fly. But they've just brought in Orlando Brown Jr. Um, last year, General Williams was starting at left tackle, but they had brought in Ted Karras, they brought in Alex Kapp, and then they brought in Leo Collins from, from Dallas. And there was a, a big to-do about, I think Leo Collins had a, came out and said, you know, you're not going to get hit anymore. This isn't going to happen again. And they went out and had a very, very similar season in terms of uh, how often Joe Burrow found himself looking straight up in, in the blue sky of Cincinnati. So I wanted to get into a little bit of why, because, you know, Joe Burrow did say something that as an offensive lineman made me take pause a little bit. He made a statement about, I believe it was on a third. He said, third down, if I give up a sack, what's the difference? Because I am, you know, if we give up a sack, I'm going to have to put the ball either way. If I give up, if I throw a pick, we're going to, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, excuse me. If I get that first down and I hold it a little bit longer, it's worth the trade off essentially of giving up that sack. I don't necessarily agree with that because what sacks do psychologically to offensive linemen and the rest of the team, as opposed to just throwing the ball away and punting it, um, certain, certainly going down ACL the first year, injuries getting hit more often is not a good thing. But you kind of like his mentality on the on, on one hand as a competitor, as an offensive lineman, don't like it very much. But I wanted to get into, you know, why does some of this stuff happen? And so I just pulled a random game last year. They played – they're, they're going to play with Cleveland twice this season because they're in the same division. So I know Cleveland's got, in particular, Miles Garrett as a great pass rusher. They have some other piece players. But really, when you look at the, the Cleveland Browns, they're a hard-nosed defense. They play physical. They're led by just this one kind of mercurial player, though. And if you if you can account for him more often than not, you're going to have success against their team because especially J Jadavion Clowney last year, although he was the number one pick in the draft, has not ever really been what I don't think anybody would consider a pass rush specialist. But we, we look early in this. Earlier, we look at Jonah Williams versus number 95, Miles Garrett. This is one of the early plays in the game, and, and I think Zach and, and the guys over in, in Cincinnati are doing a pretty good job of getting the ball out of Joe Burrow's hands quickly. In other words, they're trying to get rid of creating problems with seven-step drops, even five-step drops. There is, I mean, a ton of action out of the backfield with the running back getting the ball, quick screens. When you look through this entire game, not a lot of deep play action looks, not a lot of waggles, not a lot of keep passes. A lot of the stuff is done at the line of scrimmage. A lot of decisions are made early. And more often than not, just as a prerequisite as we go into this, I think what you'll see is Joe can hold the ball and make plays, and he can make plays with his feet. He's not a magician but in that sense, but he can make plays with his feet. But most of the great plays that this guy makes, he's making very quickly. He sees something that, that other people maybe don't see in time. His processing speed is so fast. He gets rid of the ball extremely fast. When he does hold it, he holds it for a long time. We'll see here, though. It's out quick. Miles Garrett is getting Jonah Williams, who I think is going to be either moved to right tackle this year or maybe is just a swing player and, and a swing tackle player and, and, and a backup because they brought in Orlando Brown Jr. But he gets him to turn immediately. This is just a lot of technique faults that go into Jonah Williams in particular. He, From his stance, the way he kicks out of his set, his hands are, are usually outside the cylinder. He does fight. He is an athlete, but just from a technical standpoint, he hasn't been coached up as to this point as you would hope, given some of the skill sets of the elite tackles in the National Football League. Out quick, but already Joe's feeling Miles Garrett, second play of the game. Out quick again, swing to the back again. This is just the first series. You're trying to get rid of that ball as fast as you can. You look over here on the Right side here with Lael Collins, and, and Lael you know, came out. And listen, in Dallas, he had a lot of pass pro issues as well, right? So this isn't a new thing. He's just a big body out of LSU. He had that weird thing going on uh, during the draft, so he was lucky to go to Dallas, I think, as a free agent. 
he has a huge gap in between her. And obviously gaps in, in your splits are a, are a superpower or a weapon, a pre-snap weapon for the offensive line because the further away you are from that guard in this in this particular example, the further away, because Miles Garrett and those defensive ends are, are lining up on you. So in other words, if you split out another foot, Miles Garrett's going to split out another foot as well. So you are getting him further away from the quarterback on the other hand, you're giving yourself more space to operate in, but you're also giving Miles Garrett more space to operate in. And we'll see here. This is a quick throw almost out of necessity. I want you to notice that Miles switches his stance the last minute here. As a defensive uh, end, if you saw, excuse me, as an offensive tackle, look at a defensive end. If a defensive end switches his stance and puts his outside foot back, you know immediately from a geometry and timing standpoint that he can go inside on his first step or his third step. So in this case, his left foot's back, left foot goes down first step, he can cut inside, can't do it second step any longer, and now he can go third. So in terms of engagement, you already know this is information you can use pre-snap that a lot of tackles aren't using. As you can see here, Collins is going to try to set out. He's already setting out, so his body momentum is 330 pounds, whatever he is, is going kind of east and west. And all of a sudden, Miles Garrett, who's much better athlete, leaner, faster, more explosive, is going to take that vacuum of space inside that B gap off of his first step, inside wide open, right tackles on the ground. Again, Joe Burrow's getting rid of the ball, but this sets a precedent for the rest of the rest of the game. And whether or not Joe Burrow says, I don't even notice it, I seriously doubt that. He's just like any other quarterback. He can see the rush. You can feel the pressure. You know that these defensive linemen are talking to the quarterback, they're talking to the offensive line saying, almost got him, almost got him, almost got you. We're out here wide again. See his stance is back to normal. This means he can attack you on his second or his fourth, or he can come in and do an he can come in and attack on his third step with his inside move, but that means he's going to more than likely keep continuing upfield. Stiff arm wins. And now Joe, you see this again, because of the stiff arm, because we get the, the body to turn early at, at the right tackle position, Joe's going to get his legs taken out from underneath him. So again, we're, I think we're in the second series of the game and he's in a position now where this is how quarterbacks get hurt. And so I don't think as to this point, as I'm watching the game, you see a lot of quick releases. You see a lot of three-step drops. You, you see the ball getting out early. He's still getting hit. This isn't a uh, pick on one particular player game. This is just this is a lot of technical stuff. These players can improve if they improve their technique for whatever reason. Where they have been as so far, they have not improved the technique. Does that mean that they're not being coached the right way or they're not being coached intensely enough? Or does that mean that they're not paying attention? Does that mean that they're satisfied with where they're at technically? Is that Do they not believe that that matters? I don't know. But you see a lot of this in the National Football League with guys that are getting paid millions and millions of dollars with the information and technology available to track this kind of stuff now. When we're not doing it, it really kind of it, it gives me pause. Because if you're a, a, a guy in the league – that's clicking his heel on his first kick and you're getting, you know, you have this kind of cachet that, that Lyle Collins now has in this, uh, the national football league. It's surprising to me because it immediately means you're going to turn second step. You're back in with a guy like miles Garrett, who you've given everything that he wants to, he can stiff arm, he can rip under, he can go in, he can go uh, underneath anything he wants to do. He can do at this point. Takes him out. See that space again? That is a <clears> – <throat> you just look at the rest of the offensive line, and then you see the tight end split all the way out here on the right side. And, you know, Lyle's taken a – I don't know, is that a yard and a half? Is that a two-yard split? And you understand why he's doing it. You Again, you see the left foot back here by Miles Garrett. Gives the – Gives the stutter, and this time it works. He gets him to go upfield. He gives the inside shimmy, goes upfield. This isn't pretty, but you're doing your job. You get the ball off, doesn't get hit. And this is what makes Joe Burrow so special. You see quick release throw. He's just making a ton of these plays 
in games where one, two, pop, ball's gone. Perfect pass. Now you see Jonah Williams. Jonah's got that special set for his two-point deep stagger. Toes pointed towards the defensive end. And from this set, made popular really originally by Joe Thomas, Hall of Fame player. Joe had the ability to stay square for a long time. And so he was patient and patient. He could handle that bull. So he could go almost completely vertical and handle the bullish because he had great hands. He had great base, a phenomenal athlete, good technique. He was different than other people. Like most people don't want to go vertical because they don't want to get bold at the top of the, of the pocket. Joe could do it. Not a lot of people can. Joe had that kind of strength, athleticism, and technique with his hands, quite frankly. But you see, when your feet are vertical – and then you have to change direction. You get kind of found out as an offensive lineman. You kind of discombobulated here. So he goes wide. Now he has to go back to turning in. And he's now holding on for dear life. Does a good job of anchoring. 58 gets his hand up. But does a good job. It's just, it's not exactly... When you're looking at this stuff, you got to look at it from the perspective of are you doing things the right way and ex that that can expect a victory, a victorious outcome, play after play. Great job here. I just want to highlight this. Great job by the safety. So they bring the linebacker. They walk the linebacker up in the B gap here. Looking like he's man on the running back. They send him this safety. Running back chips out the outside, catches the ball. He's one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, this is a big-time play, big-time tackle for no yards after contact. This is a new series with Joe Burrow. I just This is what you try to do from a, a Bengals standpoint. Is you, just a ton of quick throws. Keep him confident. Keep people off of him. Mix up the, the way that you're approaching and attacking that defense. So quick throw on the slant. Easy money. And you're going to see good pocket here. Still got that big split over on the right tackle. But generally speaking, where cup here is perfect. Nobody at his feet. You got one. Not a lot of yards, but you never know what's going to happen with Jamar Chase and company. Now, interesting play. You would never see this 15, 20 years ago. You got second and long. You get two wide three techniques. You essentially have one person in the box. 44, the linebacker, you can say, yeah, you could say he's in the box. He's inside the, the outside shoulder of the, of the uh, tight end, number 84. But realistically here, you could run play side zone out of this look all day, every day. And the defensive end on the right, the linebacker on the right, and the defensive end on the, on the left are really out of the play. You have to block the three technique and that linebacker with the center and the left guard. And you're going to be feeling really good about yourself. The cutoff on the backside between the tackle and the and the right guard is going to go up to 44. I mean, this is a monster running opportunity. You would just never see 15, 20 years ago. But because of all this stuff they do now. And this is a good running play as well. But I'm just saying from a simplicity standpoint, trying to take offensive linemen and get them really comfortable being repping out certain things. Man, I don't think you can make it easier than that that first look for, for an inside zone run. So we got third down, one, two, three, pump, balls out. So they don't make it through here. You see that big gap again. I'm not highlighting 34. They don't make it through here as far as getting a, a first down, but they do keep the quarterback clean. Offensive linemen, these are not these are certainly not free reps, but as far as feeling like you can get your quarterback hurt. This builds the confidence of the offensive line. If they're going to call the game like this, it's going, they're going to, we're going to keep a relatively clean pocket. You see the cross shot here by Javadian and Clowney. This is where Clowney, it's interesting because he has, you know, you see this move and you go, man, he's got something there. He can never quite finish this playoff. He's just never gotten his ability to flip right here, flip the hips. He's always kind of still pressing up field and allowing this, right tackle to press with his outside hand, his left hand here and press him upfield and pass him by the quarterback. He's never been able to flip your hips right here, which is, you know, when you look, think back about guys like Warren Sapp who have these outside shot clip rip moves or the cross shot moves, 
with a, with a guy like Von Miller, they can flip their hips and then go right to the quarterback. He still has to come upfield. I think that's been the difference between you know him being able to finish a lot of these plays and just being what we would consider, honestly, an average pass rusher in the National Football League. Interesting look here. They went back to the run game. Uh, I just wanted to show this that you show the same kind of the same kind of look, but they brought in the Bengals brought in. You know, they said they had that look before where they ran the jet sweep, and now they bring in it's a two by two, but you've got everybody bunched in, and now you're just going to run the fake jet with the counter trap around. And again, it's not a bad play, but look at the lineup you get. Similar situation. Down the distance, uh, place on the field. Look at the amount of people you get in the box. Look how much more difficult it is to run this play than it was the last one. And it's just by form. It's just an interesting... Uh, you would have thought that the next series, the series after this, they would have gone back to the other formation, fake the jet sweep and just run the, the zone or the counter. The, the open counter out of that other look because of the defense you're going to get against the Cleveland Browns. It would have been much easier to run against. But that's not why we're here. This is a tough sport, guys. <laughs> this is a tough sport. Because when things start going bad, it happens in bunches, right? It's the rule of three, right? If, if one thing bad happens to you, you can pretty much count that three things bad are going to happen. I mean, that's the it's a pessimistic look of an offensive lineman. That's how it goes. So this should be they're going to bring the they're going to bring their their linebacker and they're going to pit him up against Mixon, the running back. When you bring as an offensive lineman, when you're bringing pressure, it's usually you or they're bring or the running games. It's usually your favorite time of like five step pass protection because. The, the defensive linemen are all now forced to rush in specific lanes. Their lane discipline is not necessarily different than what you're going to get during the rest of the course of the game. But, like, for example, the player over the left guard is going to rush from the A gap into the B gap. When he rushes into the B gap, he essentially runs out of creativity. He's just running into that lane and doing a bull. So a lot of the moves and all the special subtleties that make these guys great are erased when you start bringing pressure because they get in their mind, I have to get to my gap and I have to occupy my gap, and they stop thinking about actually beating the man. So generally speaking, you think a lot of this stuff is going to be easier, at least from the interior of the offensive line, than it would be otherwise. Now, you look over at Miles Garrett and you see that stance. You can tell that he's trying to go north-south fast. Same thing, J.V. and Kleiner. They're both in four-point sprinter stances. Mixing comes up. This is initially a pretty good pocket here. And this is where, as a quarterback, how can you help your offensive line and running back who's doing a, doing a good job trying to pick this up? We have... A linebacker drops seven yards. You can go one-on-one -on -one here. You don't necessarily have this over the throw uh, down the seam uh, route. Do you want to tuck it and run, or do you want to fight for more time? And right now he decides to fight for more time. Sack fumble from Garrett. Turnover. Bengals ball. Now, a couple series later. It starts happening fast, guys. A couple series later. We got 58 over on Jonah. He's got that. He's got that vertical set. He drops his back foot. He's catching. We just call this catching. You're not initiating contact. The defensive end is a complete rhythm into what he wants to do. Tax the outside arm. You're showing weakness by not having your feet on the ground when you engage in. You have to have a great relationship with the ground when you're punching your opponent as an offensive lineman. He doesn't do that. Therefore, this, you know, you're not going to get an easier sack, I think, if you're 58, than you got that in that specific play. So now we got two sacks, Joe, and he's been, look, been roughed up a couple times. Now you're going to run the down, down, around game. Again, you see Miles Garrett's got his back, his outside foot back. You're going to run this down, down, around game 
with the linebackers, you're going to go tackle in, linebacker around. And really, Miles Garrett's going to end up making this play. So hopefully, Jonah sees this, or uh, 73 Jonah Williams sees this first step is outside. He goes inside. And now we're catching again instead of – we're always chest on shoulder. We see 67, chest on shoulder. 73, chest on shoulder. We're not punching and extending. We're not keeping them off our bodies. What does that do? That takes away your ability to recover. That lets them put strength on – on weakness because now they're forward momentum shoulder pad into your chest instead of shoulder pad into your hands, or you're actually punching and, and, and extending away from this person. You don't have that recovery time. You're not blunting their force at all. And really miles Garrett puts his shoulder into, into 73 knocks him off. We have 54 coming around, but the damage is really done because 73 has given uh, Joe Burrow nowhere to go. So now we have three sacks and all of a sudden it it's looking like a bad day. For the Cincinnati Bengals. Now Joe gets rid of the ball here, but it's like when you start smelling blood, especially when you're 95, you look on the, you know, you go to the sidelines as a player and you look and they got these Microsoft pads and they've got all, with, you know, what it looks like pre-snap and post-snap of every play. And he's sitting over here, I'm sure, and he's seeing this yard and a half or whatever, two yard split that Lyle Collins has given up. And he's probably going, oh, well, that's a lot of space, considering this guy's a flat setter. He, I mean, Lyle Collins can't even set deep if he wants to. He's a flat setter. This is how he sets. This is how he's been taught. You can see he's, he's much more upright than everybody else. He's not a great bend there. So there's not going to be a lot of great explosive movement because he's not in a position to do so. He's going to come out and try to jump this guy with a wider set. He's going to give up that inside, inside lane. And inevitably... I mean, that's a bad look. And so right now, Joe Burrow's thinking, I'm going to get murdered here. You got to start looking at the rush. He eludes this somehow, gets rid of this football. But tough situation, tough sport, starts going downhill. Empty look, three by two, three to the right. Got a penalty here. And this is what kind of I was talking about. So you got five receivers out on out in the rush, or excuse me, out in uh, running routes. And now he's – this offensive line is doing a commendable job here. I think, first of all, Javion Clowney was offsides. Glale Collins does a good job of warding him off. He's got a ton of time here. And you're trying to make something happen with your feet and trying to buy time. And this is, this is the other part of giving up sacks, though. You know, you hold the ball for one – Two, three, four, five, six. And now you're out the pocket. Bad things happen. There's a matchup here. Wanted to highlight. Because long arms, this is just a rule of thumb. Long arms hurt. They hurt your feelings. They hurt your chest. They hurt your back because you end up on it. If you're a young defensive end, learn how to rush at a, at a, at a severe angle. Learn how to get work everything off a lawnmower into the chest until they prove they can knock it off. Until they until the then you'll figure out what hand they commit to knocking it off. If these guys are playing high, if you can get them to turn early, if you can get them to squirt it to the sideline, learn to work a long arm. Become a long arm. You can swipe the outside hand, flip your hips around. You can bull, you can use it to rip underneath. There's so many things you can do, but it just hurts the feelings of offensive linemen because eventually what happens is you end up on your back. And again, Jadavion Clowney is not an exalted pass rusher, but he's got that stiff arm right in the chest. And now Joe's again running for his life, makes a great play. Empty set, three by two. Quick ball, get rid of it. I, I, you know, this is this is what the Bengals offense becomes, and they can do it because they have the personnel that they do. It'll be interesting to see later on as they evolve, if they can get better at pass protection. And listen, this is going to be part of anybody's offense. That's not what I'm saying. But they're doing this maybe more than anybody right now because they are worried about that, that quarterback getting hit. 
for pocket protection. I love this. It's kind of my, I think I, now I remember why I brought this in. Miles Garrett, left guard now feels like, ah, oh, it's time. Get the shot on him. Man, you better, if you're going to get the long arm push and everything, hit him with your helmet, give him everything you got. Try to knock him down. Don't leave him in a position where he just bounces up and down and doesn't, doesn't even really think about you being there. Great play by Joe Burrow here. So you're going to see a little bit of pressure from both sides. And again, like these are two good tackles, one or two good defensive ends. Miles Garrett's arguably the best rusher in the league or complete defensive, you know, most complete defensive end in the league. And so this is going to happen, right? And they even leave the, the tight end in, and they're, they're splitting the tight end wider so you can get a hand on them earlier. And you see we have, I think this is this might be Mixon here, out here to get a chip on this defensive end. So we're doing, even though we're going empty, we're doing everything we can to slow down the rush of those two defensive ends, right? Because they are, we're talking about wide now, right? So you got two guys touch. But Miles Garrett just comes in straight bull, right into the pocket, right into the lap of, uh, or, the, or the backside of Joe. I want to show this. Now, for running backs, if you're in the running back room and you come over and you watch film with offensive linemen and the right tackle's having a day, not a good day, and you're supposed to chip out, and this is what you add to the party. I mean, you forearm him in the back on the way by. You're not going to lunch with us. Wherever we're going to lunch, usually we invite you. We're not inviting you anymore. You're, you're disinvited. That's terrible. Double wide three look here. And again, this is technique stuff. You know, you start you start talking about why are these guys struggling? I've said this for multiple years now with, with whatever's going on on the practice fields over there. It's not, they're not working a lot on technique. You look at the left tackle here and we're not, listen, we're not picking on these, they're NFL players. Their technique's not what it should be and it's preventing them from being what they could be, Okay. So right here, he's in a position, his hands are late because he's late because of the way that he gets in his stance and the way he sets and the way he turns. He's put himself in a position where Miles Garrett is in complete control now. He can try to rip this through or he can spin back underneath. Spins back underneath, you're on your backside. So a spin throws you. If a spin throws you, that tells me that you're – Shoulder to chest again, instead of punching and extended, you have no place to recover. That backside elbow swings through and you have bad momentum. So it's a footwork issue. It's a, it's a timing issue with your punch. These are things that you have to become a master at in order to be good and, and, and the right people to protect one of the top three quarterbacks in the National Football League. When you're in this position, it's inevitable bad things are going to happen. And so it's not just the plays where Joe gets hit. It's all the plays that accumulate in the back of your brain when it's third down again. You're looking over there and going, oh, here he is again. Joe Burrow is an amazing player. This is why I say he's a magician. He gets hit on this play. He ends up on the ground. And he throws a casual touchdown. Miles wow, slips. Ends up knocking him on his backside. Knocks Joe to the ground. Still makes a play. The quarterback is really good. And I think as you see this, you know, because you a lot of talk was has been about, well, what's who's responsible? What's the, you know, and it's always a team effort, right? Our receivers running the right routes. Is he having to hold the ball longer than he wants to? Certainly they don't they don't call plays that take three, four, five seconds. Bad things happen during plays. But there's a lot of stuff in here where I think just from a technical standpoint, you're losing almost pre-snap. See the twist, get the penetration on the left guard. He's on the move again. And then, listen, you know life is going bad when you give up a sack, when you give up a sack on a screen pass. And I think this is Alex Cap, and he's a vet, and he's done this a million times. He's a good player. 
But that's all he gives the defensive tackle. He gives him a push through. And right about here, he realizes that he counted poorly. The screens, screens in an offensive lineman's mind go something like this. Ready, set, hut. 1,001, 1,002, go. Or 1,001, 1,002, 1,000, go. Depending, or 1,001, 1,002, you know, get the hell out of there. It's never push the guy by and run. That's unless it's those, you know, new school quick screens. This is for running back screens. Play side lineman has to identify who the, who the, uh, if there's a, a man linebacker on, has to go attack him. Otherwise, he's attacking flat. Second guy is his personal protector. Third guy is kind of cleaning up the mess. So right now, Alex Kappa realizes I might have counted poorly. Because of that, Joe can't step up. Miles gets his, I think this is 2.5 sacks in the game. A couple here with 99. Tough sport, guys. So when you look at this stuff, it's a lot of it's a lot of just base technical. And, and I guess my point is, given the 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 player that you have at the quarterback position, given the the, the weapons you have at the receiver position, arguably the best you know, receiver group in the league now, you bring in this talent. You bring in Ted Karras, you bring in Alice Capper, you bring in you, you bring in Leo Collins. We're either not Orlando Brand Jr. is another guy where he's a big guy i don't know that he's the best pass protector in the world so in other words like i don't know that i'm ranking him in the top 10 12 pass protectors at left tackle i think he's a tough no like i love the way he plays i love how tough he is i don't think he's a great pass protector for somebody who is not necessarily um the, the most mobile person on the planet and and is going to maybe hold that ball on third down We'll have to wait and see. But what's interesting here is we're either doing a – the Bengals are either doing an interesting job of identifying what they think are the right kind of people for the job because they paid – in particular, they paid Leo Collins a lot of money to come play right tackle for them. Or they're not developing the guys in the case of Jonah Williams in particular. I think it was a first-round pick there in 2019. They're not developing these guys technically to be – kind of dominant lineman or, or I don't want to say competent, but I, there's a lot of meat on that bone where these guys could be better than they are. And it just comes down to your stance, your pat, your set, your hand and your footwork, your body position, your hands. Can you get those things or can you be the best at that? There's a lot of this going on in the league. It gets spotlighted a lot because Joe Burrow is so such a great player. Listen, you can turn on any tape from any amount of, years and years and years of footage and guys are struggling all over the board because defensive ends and, and defensive tackles are far more talented than we are. But you'd like to see a little bit of more of give and take than you do in some of these games. And usually when you're not seeing that, it's not from a lack of toughness. It's not from a lack of want to, it's a lack from having to know how to do it the right way. So I hope you enjoyed that. Again, hit that subscribe button, rate and review us on our Process to Perform channel on YouTube. Hit me up, Michael, on Twitter, uh, Michael68 on Twitter, Process to Perform on Instagram. Guys, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. We'll get you next week.